Now look, here is something happening quietly by stealth that you need to really understand because this will soon be rolled out right across every state and buried at all levels of government. And Labor's hope is that you won't notice it all until it's too late. Because while Victorians, along with 61% of all Australians, voted no to The Voice, the Victorian Labor government is pushing on with a race-based separatist agenda as if the referendum had never been defeated. As revealed in this document I was passed today, the Allen government believes that Aboriginal Victorians have been shut out of independence and prosperity, so it's proposing to remedy this by returning to them a portion of the $1 billion plus that Victoria has gained in mineral royalties over the past decade. Here are the words of Victorian Energy Minister Lily D'Ambrosio. My intention, she says, is to embed within a critical mineral strategy the concept of traditional owner benefit sharing. Now, nothing about working for a living like everyone else has to. This is benefit sharing. We have to acknowledge, she went on, that traditional First Peoples cannot possibly be able to be secure what self-determination means for them without having an embedded and reliable source of revenue for themselves, ultimately through treaty. Now, this would be voice treaty truth, the whole Uluru agenda that voters overwhelmingly rejected, but that the Green left and the Albanese government remains committed to. She said that the mining resources and the royalties that state governments had collected had played a significant role in, and I quote, perpetuating land injustice against First Peoples. Now, let's call this leftist myth-making for what it is, blatant double-dipping on behalf of Aboriginal people who first benefit from the economic opportunities and tax revenues that we all do, from the benefit of mining in the general budget. But then if the Victorian government goes ahead with his race-based favouritism, well, they'd all get a second go through a special allocation of money to Indigenous Victorians only. And it's this bit from the minister that's the kicker. This is the so-called benefit sharing. It may include financial payments from proponents of new major transmission projects, as well as co-ownership, procurement, employment and training opportunities. Last week, the Cumberland Shire Council on New South Wales almost passed a treaty of a sort that ratepayers knew very little about, and it was only because a councillor, Steve Christo, blew the whistle that they were stopped. It's a comprehensive document prepared by lawyers. It states from the outset it is a treaty. It was brought to um, council with no briefing to the councillors, no legal representations of whatsoever. They couldn't win the support of Australians for the divisive, race-based separatist agenda fair and square. So now at state and local government levels, there's a real push to do it anyway. But do it in a way they hope you will never notice. This is why tonight I want to make sure you do.